Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense. That no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. But when this rifle is the only thing standing between your family and a dozen angry Democrats in clan hoods, you just might need that semi-automatic in all 30 rounds. Welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all for being with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, you can support the Father's Day by going to thefatherstate.tv slash donate. And also we are on locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. And I do appreciate it. I have with me Jerome Davison. He is an Arizona congressional candidate, former NFL running back at a pastor. Jerome, welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, man, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to share what we have going on. Nice. And so what made you stop being a running back, NFL running back? Age. Age? Oh, okay. (laughs) Age and injury. I'm the only player from college to play in the NFL with no cartilage in my right ankle. And who did you play for? Arizona State. Oh, yeah? I was once a high school dropout from Mississippi. Ended up going to California, got into a junior college, became an All-American there, actually in the Hall of Fame there. And then I got a full-ride scholarship to Arizona State. And were you good at it? I was pretty good. Yeah. I, led, I led ASU in rushing. I was in the Hall of Fame at the junior college, and schools from all around the country wanted me, so I ended up going to Arizona State. Nice. Arizona State, at Arizona State, the Rams and the Oakland Raiders was going to draft me in the late first round. Right on. But I end up having an injury here in L.A. against the UCLA Bruins. First play from scrimmage, popped my cartilage. It sounded like a, like a two-by-four being snapped. And, uh, and, but my team kept shooting me up with this stuff called cortisone so I wouldn't feel it. Right. And I ended up playing and making it worse my senior year. Okay. So when it got time for me to run for the, 40, for the NFL, I ran a slow time because I was hobbling like Igor. Yeah. I was in so much pain. Yeah. Uh, turns out that I had cartilage just shattered all over the place. Amazing. And, uh, but I still made it to the NFL, played four years. Right on, man. And so did you buy your mama a house? Uh, yes. You know how the black guy, they always yeah. buy mama you know, a house. Uh, mama, hey, always the shout outs to mama, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but my dad was still around too, and I, and I blessed my dad too. Oh, no. Nice. I love my dad. You do? Yeah. And who are you closest to? Grow- did you have both parents when you were growing up? I had up? both parents growing up. And who are you closest to? My mom. Uh, baby. I was, no. <laughs> well, I was closer to my mom, I loved, it, it, but I, my, my father, let me tell you, my father was so potent, and whatever he said to me, it stuck with me. It had more, it had more oomph, it had more power to it. So my father looked at me, and he didn't spend a lot of time with me because he's a truck driver, right. and he owned trucks, and he spent a lot of time working on the road. But the few words that he would say to me, the positive things about my identity, about who I was as a man, and, and I was his son, he said to me, he says, nobody's tougher than you. That was enough to take me to the NFL and all that stuff. And so why were you closer to your mother then? Because I spent more time with her. She cooked the meals. She uh, talked to me. She, I was, she was taking me to my practices and all that kind of stuff. So just just spending more time with her. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, and you became a pastor. Yes. Why? I fell in love with God. One of the greatest gifts I got from my parents. And my father would buy me motorbikes and go-karts and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Me and my siblings, we'd get just about everything we wanted for Christmas. But on my 16th birthday, my mom, who was in church, my father wasn't so much in church. He taught me the essence and the, and the importance of working hard, hard work. He poured that into me. But my mother, she was instrumental in putting the faith in me, making me go to church when I didn't want to go. And, but at my 16th birthday, she bought me a Bible, blue Bible, I'll never forget it. And she had my name inscripted on the front. And that made me interested in reading the Bible. And from there, I started reading the Bible. At 17 years old, I gave my life to Jesus, 17. No more drinking, no more fornicating, no more sleeping around until I got married. All right. And I just walked with God. Even going to Arizona State at the time was known as the most partying school in the United States. Never went to one party. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't use profanity. Really? That's, that's just how God changed me. He just so came were you called by God to be a pastor or did you go to school for it? Both. 
And why did you were called and you went to school? Yes. Why did you have to go to school if you were called by God? I wanted to do both. I, I just wanted to enhance my skills. So from, from being an athlete most of my life, you want to get as much advantage and be as great in, in a particular field as you can. So if I'm going to be a running back, I need the best running back coaches. I need to do extra sit push-ups and crunches and all the stuff that I need to do to be the best at it. Yes, I'm, I could be a great running back without doing that, but it would enhance me better if I got the education. And that's what I felt about and it. And you didn't believe that God would enhance it over education and everything? I, I, he did. He did. Before, but without the education, though, you didn't believe that he was going to teach you and guide you and all that? He did. So why would you need to try to improve it by going to school? I wanted, I wanted more knowledge for me. I wanted more insight. Uh, and you don't and think he was going to, you didn't think he would give you that? He did give it, but he, that's a great question. Maybe I, maybe I, I should have just, just relied on him to do it, but I, I just wanted to get the education. And so why you didn't think, why you didn't know he was going to do that? If he called you, why you didn't know that he was going to prepare you, he was going to guide you? Because we don't know what he wanted us to do until right. we were doing it. Right. Why did you know that he was going to do that for you if he called you? He did, but I was around a lot of older pastors who were my mentors. They had gotten education, and I love the insight that they had. I love their study. I love their, their exegesis and their approach to the text. They just they gave, gave more insight, you know, and than, you I, than I did. And you trusted them more than God? No, I, I wouldn't say that, but, but that's a great were, question. I mean, it's a great way of putting it. I mean, yeah. maybe I should have just reconsidered that, but, but study has helped. It has in help, enhanced me. It has helped with uh, administration, helped with assimilation with people in the church, coming to the church. It has helped, you know. But intellectual people don't know God. They just know about him. They have an idea, but they don't know him. Uh-huh. I believe that. I, I do believe but that. But you trusted the intellectual people. Well, here's the thing. Moses, God allowed him to do 40 years of training in Egypt, and he used that training and that knowledge. Of course, the apostle Paul was a theologian of his time and one of the Sanhedrins, and God used that knowledge too, but just flipped it to where he gave him insight on who Christ was from the Old Testament, from the, from the boards to the colors, the, the, the blue, the purple, the scarlet, all of those things, the, the, the silver sockets, how they re represented redemption, it represented Christ. But, you know, a little education doesn't hurt. But it's not, I don't think education is, is, is anti-God. But education cannot tell you about God, though. It only intellectually tell you about God, right. but it prevents most people from ever knowing God. <clears throat> and that's why most people don't know God right. is because they've been educated about him mm -hmm. and they think they know him just because they have an idea about right. him. Right. Uh, yeah, th that's what Paul said, knowledge puffeth up. Yeah. And then they, and, and they think from their head that they can serve God. Right. But it has to be in the heart. I totally get it. But it has, it has helped me. I'm not saying it didn't help. It has enhanced my ministry somewhat and uh, I've written books and stuff like that. And that helped me write the book and give me a better perspective on how to approach uh, the people and the ministry, stuff like that. And so, and how do you know God called you? Because he gave me a burden to do it. I just, um, when I was in the world, I never dreamed of preaching. I never dreamed of doing works for people and helping people to know God and teaching the Bible to them and, and praying over them and all the things that comes with pastoring. Uh, but when I gave my life to Christ at 17 years old, he began to groom me for, for pastoring and for teaching people the word. So much so that everywhere I went playing football, from the time I got saved, to junior college, to Arizona State, to the Oakland Raiders, Al Davis made me the team chaplain when I got to the Raiders. I didn't even, I didn't even ask. And it was God showing me that he was, his hand was on me to teach and train, and he was showing me through different events like that. And who was Al Davis? Al Davis. Who was? He, he was the owner of the Oakland Raiders. The oh, infamous I thought he was Al a Davis. rapper. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he okay. thought he was a rapper. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you teach people the Bible? Because it shows them who God is. It shows them the will of God, and it sets them free. But God said, let no man teach you. Okay. All right. And so if he said that, why do you teach people? Well, Ephesians 4 and 11 says that Jesus gave five gifts to the church. And it says, I've given them apostles, pastors, teachers, teachers, pastors, evangelists, and prophets. 
So I believe I'm a gift to the body of God when it comes to teaching the Bible and being a pastor. But those that he gave us, they didn't teach us about God. Right. They pointed the people back to God, which is within, and, and the Holy Spirit would teach us all things. Right. Because when human beings teach you, they puff you up with knowledge. Right. And you never really know God. That's why most people who have the knowledge of God, they're not happy. They have no peace. Do you have perfect peace? I do. You have perfect peace? Yes. And what does that mean to have perfect peace? It means to have a relationship with God and not have a fear of death, knowing what's going to happen after this life. So I live the life that I currently live. I live it looking forward to my eternity with God. Do you have anger? Mm, yes. You do have anger. I have anger at what's happening in the world. I have anger at what's happening in the political scene. I have anger when I see them t trying to tell a boy he's a girl and telling a girl she's a guy. And that's, that brings me anger, righteous and, indignation. And why do you have anger about that? Because the, they're taking the children's innocence. And what good is that, your anger doing that, to know that? What good is it? It's driving me to work harder, uh -huh. to teach more, to get people, get volunteers, get other people to get involved so that we can save our children from this untoward generation. And uh, is anger of God or of the devil? It's of God. And so you believe God has anger? Yes. And, and why do you believe that? Uh, say, for example, Genesis chapter 6, when God sent the flood. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, or you say, and it says, and the anger of God was kindled against so-and-so. So, so God shows anger. He shows pleasure. He shows uh, love. He shows types of expressions like us. Do so you, anger is one of the attributes of God. And do you believe that his anger is the same type of anger you have? Yeah. I, you, I, believe, I believe the Holy Spirit inside of me makes me angry. Really? Against Evil and wickedness, lies, deception, when people murder people, when children are raped, those type of things. I, I do. I get righteous, uh, righteous indignation. And so how do you explain where God said, be angry and sin not? Well, that right there, what you just said. He said, I'm allowing you room to be angry, but watch what you do with it. Because, see, just like laughter and uh, love and all of the emotions that we have, God gave it to us. And anger is really? one of the things he gave, it, gave us. Um, but discernment is what he was referring to, to be able to see what's wrong, mm -hmm. but don't be angry at what you see. And then in discernment, because it comes from God, you'll be able to deal with it. Because when you become angry at it, it controls you. You remember and when you Jesus... you become like what you You hate. remember when Jesus was in the temple? Right. And he saw the money changers right. and all these different people taking advantage of people. And he went outside and he made a whip. He made it. Right. God took his time to make a whip. And he went in there and he turned over their tables and drove them out. Why? Because he was angry. And you say he was emotional about it? Oh, absolutely. N no. That's you, what I, that's what. You can, you can see what's wrong and feel nothing about it and know that it's wrong because you're discerning it. Okay. And you can take strong action but to another angry person, it looked like you're angry because they're angry and mm -hmm. they're overreacting. Mm -hmm. But Jesus didn't have the same thing because anger is of the devil. Anger is of the devil, Jesse? 100%. Okay. I, you know, I, that's my first time hearing from, it. Nothing good come from anger. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're married, you say? I'm divorced. Oh, you're divorced. I'm single right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you, <laughs> you have children? Five. Really? One boy. And which did you make first, boys or girls? Girls. Three, a, three in a row. No wonder you sing her. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Real men make boys yeah. first. I, you know, I, I, guess I, I guess I am not a real man. <laughs> but I love them, and they love me, yeah. and, and they've grown up to be wonderful young women. I've had the pleasure of walking two of them down the aisle, Jesse. Nice. Jesse, you talking about that chest out. Brother, I was standing up straight, walking like a big stallion. Amazing. I'm so uh, proud of you. Um, do you know the secret to making boys first? Talk to me. Do you know it? Well, I ain't married now. You ain't got to tell me now, Jesse. But you are, get, are you ever get married again? Possibly. I can't tell you here on the air because I can't see it on the radio. We have kids watching. Okay. But when we were growing up, the older guy, 
men used to tell us the secret to making boys first. Mm-hmm. And everyone I know made boys first, including really? myself. Really? Because I knew the secret. I got to get that when we get, when we get off. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, give that to me, Jesse. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I give noticed that, that most men, men today, mm-hmm. especially millennial men, because right. they're beta, they make girls first. Right. Well, look, my son just had a baby. He just had a baby. A boy? He's not, he's not married, and he had a boy. Right on. Yeah. Maybe he knows the secret. Maybe he knows the secret. <laughs> <laughs> and so you decide, oh, let me ask, you mentioned happiness. Are you like sometimes happy and sometimes sad? Uh, I would say there are times I'm, I'm concerned. I'm not really a sad person. Um, but happiness is fleeting. I, I never look for happiness. So I look for contentment. Uh, right. you, know, you know, and really that's rare for me because I'm always progressing myself. I'm a, I'm a results-oriented person. I like to see results in what I do. I get in there, I put my all in there, I get heavily vested into it, I put my passion into it, I put my prayers into it, I give my energy and all the things that I do, and uh, I'm looking for results. That's basically do, do it. You, um, do you love white people? Yes. You love white people? Yes, I do. Um, you decide, you ran for... Uh, um, what Congress, you U.S. Congress. U.S. Congress, as a Republican. Yes. And were you a Democrat before coming, becoming a Republican? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, the very first time Obama ran, uh, I, I, I voted for him. Really? Yeah. D- disappointingly, you, yeah. I know you disappointed in me, right? I'm stunned. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Did you vote for him twice or only once? Oh, no, just once. And what made you vote for Obama, the fallen messiah? I, I know. I, I, well, I was a Democrat <laughs> at the time. Um, my parents were not, believe it or not, my parents were not political at all. My right. father was just a hard worker. He was just a truck driver, right? He'd come home smelling like diesel, and just that was his interest. Right. He wasn't he wasn't involved in sports or anything, just working. My mother was just a you know she was in the church, and uh, and into our lives. But I didn't know about politics. But being around a black community in Mississippi, everybody was just it was right. just Democrat, which is automatic. That's why I became one too out here. You were a Democrat out here. I but can't believe that. Growing up in Alabama, I didn't know any Democrats. I only knew. All the black people I knew were Republicans. At what year did you become a Republican? Um, I moved out here 68, 69, 70, 70. In the 70s? Yeah. Mm. So uh, I think it was like 2006, no, no, 2014. Maybe in the 80s. Okay. But go ahead. Okay. But I think it was around two, 2014, where I, well prior to that. I had this epitome, and I, and I began to look deeper into Obama. Yeah. He, he's a destroyer. He's a liar. And I believe he hates black people. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't call him the first black American president because he's not. His father is African and his mother is, is Caucasian. And he, did, he didn't have a connection to the black feeling of the black, uh, 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 black America. Yeah. And, and here's another thing that what the Democrat Party does is that they take the, the mulatto blacks, the light-skinned blacks, and they put them in front of us because, you know, you know they, they think that we're just attracted to light-skinned blacks. And you get people like uh, Susan Rice, Kamala Harris, Obama, and you make them the leaders. But somebody as dark skinned as me, they would never mm. uh, put me out there. And most of those mulatto so-called Democrat leaders are, have ties to other countries like Jamaica. Uh, uh, Colin Powell, yeah. his parents, are, he's from Jamaica and, and he's half white. We should have foreigners run out of a country. Anyway. Exactly. But let me ask. Um, so. Let me, I want to go back to the pastor thing and then move on. Um, do you believe that a woman should be allowed to preach in a church? Yes. You do? Mm-hmm. Would you ever sit under a woman? Yes. I know you're running for office. You can't say the truth on the air, right? No, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm a, I, I'm a Christian. I have to tell the truth. Okay. I have to tell I the truth. I don't want to get you in trouble because no, you no. need the woman vote. Maybe I shouldn't get, ask you about these things. I get a lot of, I have a lot of support. I have a lot of support. But they don't know what you really think. No, but I honestly feel like I have, I have no problem with women preachers. So would you ever sit under a woman? If she's dynamic enough. Would you ever sit under a woman preacher? Yes. What do you mean dynamic? If, she's, if, she, if I'm learning from her and she's, uh, she's great in the things of God and she's great at teaching, I don't see no problem with it. Were women created to lead or to follow? To be aside, to be beside the man. Were they created to lead or to follow? Both. Were they created to lead or to follow? I would say both, Jesse. Women were created to lead and follow? Yeah. 
I'm sorry? Yes. Who created them to lead? Well, God did. God created a woman to lead? Okay, what, what, uh, to, for a single woman, who, who does she follow? Did God create, you said God created women to lead? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Or you just, because I, I don't want to ask you about the women because you need their votes. I need, I'm going to get their votes, man. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry about it. And so where's your proof that, and you say yes, as a pastor mm -hmm. and a congressional person, and a former NFL running back, mm -hmm. you saying God created women to lead. I believe that God has gifted women to lead. Now, I, I would, let me retract that. Uh, if, 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 so. yeah, if, if you're we, sweating. Yeah, you if, need some, I'm sweating um, now? No, you're not. I'm okay, saying. do you always, this guy. <laughs> but if, if we go back to, the, to, you know, creation, yeah, she was created to stand by her man. She was created to, to follow him. I'm sorry? She was created to follow him, but. All right. What happens to the single woman? Who does she follow? I, I, but we got to clear up this thing. You said God created a w woman to lead. Uh, uh, yeah, let me retract that. Let me say that God created the man to be the head and woman to follow him. So are, now, are, you, saying, are you now saying God did not create the woman that's to lead? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. Yeah. And, and so knowing that, why would you sit under a woman pastor, no matter how dynamic she is? Dynamic mean if she speak real loud and hoop and holler? No, that doesn't. That, that, I mean, it may include some of that. <laughs> it, it may include some of it. And so if you know that women were created to follow and not lead, why would you sit under a woman? Well, there was instances in the Bible where a woman led. If you know that women were not created to lead but to follow, why would you sit under a woman? Because... The Spirit of God rests on them, just like the Spirit of God rests on a man. But and they were not created to lead. Yeah, but and there's... And any some... woman that said that she's leading men, it's proof that God's Spirit is not upon her. Well, Only maybe not. No, no, spirit. no, no. In a society where, where the men are cursed, God will bring forth the woman. Like in today's society, men have not accepted their role in the things of the Lord. And so... God will bring forth a Deborah and she will lead for a time until God raises up a man to do it. But in today's society, men are not accepting their role. You know, so so sometimes, yeah, he'll anoint a woman. Where did you get that from? Well, the, Deborah was not anointed. Yes, she And then she was guided by men that were telling her what to do. She was not doing it on her own. And she was not led by God to do it. Men were still guiding her. Well, so where did you get this thing well, that God anointed her to do in, it? In that text, what we're talking about, the, all of the city came out to be judged by her. Right, but she, she was still told by men what to do. In what, in what way? How to run it, what to do it, how to act. She didn't know of her own how to do it. She told, she told Barak how things were going to go. But she, let me go back to this. Um, are you still saying you will still sit under a woman? Mm -hmm. Would you take? Would you listen to a woman? I listen to my mom. Would you listen to? A, you still listen to your mother? Yeah, she gives me wisdom. She prays for me. So would you listen to a woman preacher and any other woman? Yes. You would. I would listen. And, and why? Because they're preaching the word of God. Wow. God said that every time the man listened to the woman, he would suffer. Where is that? With Adam and Eve. He said, because you listen to the woman, you're going to suffer. And if you pay attention, every time the man listened to the woman today, he suffers, including from his mama. There was two incidences with Abraham. Am I right about that? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I like what you're saying. Am but I there, right about it? I, I like what you're saying, Jesse. Am I, am I, I right about it? You're right about the text, but not the overall perspective. And I, I want to share a verse with you. Okay. Or, or two situations. Okay. Abraham got in trouble because he listened to his wife. Remember, right. the plan was that God was going to have a, a, a birth through Sarah. But Sarah said, maybe you can use my concubine and God's going to bless us through that. Right. right. They had the concubine. The time came that Ishmael grew up and he began to taunt, you know, the promised son. And then Sarah said to Abraham, send them away. And God said to Abraham, listen to your wife. And he sent them away. So one instance, he listened to her and she messed things up. The other instance, he listened to her and he obeyed it and God, God approved it and he sent them away. And so why would you listen to a woman? 
we, when you notice that every time the man listens to the woman, he suffers. It's not every time. Uh huh. It's not every time. I just gave you an every example time of one man, of them. Where are those people now that you're talking about? They're in the Middle East. Their descendants the, are in the Middle East. They're still living? No, they're not still living. Where but are their they? descendants are still here. Where are they? In the grave. I rest my case. <laughs> okay. And, All right. And they were part of the Old Testament too, right? Yeah. Okay. I rest my case so, again. So, so on the uh, day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, did the Holy Spirit just come on men or women? Or on both? It came upon the men. Wasn't Mary, the mother of Jesus, present? Right. And the Spirit of God didn't come upon her? No. Okay. Well, I just Mary that didn't the even know who Jesus really was. She knew that he was her, she had had this son. He was a son. And that's, but she did not know his purpose here. Mm -hmm. She didn't know or understood, understood. She didn't understand his whole purpose, that he was a son of God. He would be dying to save us all. She didn't know that until he, he rose from the grave and he mm -hmm. said, Mother, this is me, your son. Right. She sat down, right? But uh, let me go back to this. Why would you listen to a woman knowing that you're not supposed to? I don't, I don't get that from the scripture like you do. Oh, I would have so to when, get more when scriptures. God said to Adam, and it still happens today, mm -hmm. that every time the man listened to the woman, you thought, you think he's just playing? No, but my mother is a woman, and right. she gave me a lot of wisdom in life. Women don't have wisdom to give. Well, she gave it to me. Where did she get it and from? And let me tell you what I did. Where did she get it from? She got it from God or from, from experience, but she taught me not to go out there and mistreat the girls. She taught me to be a faithful husband. Never, not one time did I cheat on my ex-wife. What do you mean I'm not? If she my hadn't mom, taught my you mom that, you would not me. have known that? My mom gave me plenty of wisdom. So if your mother hadn't told you not to mistreat the women, you would not have known that? Uh, I probably wouldn't have really regarded as highly as I did growing up. Were you a slut catchy. maker at one time? <laughs> no, I wasn't. You were never a slut what maker? What is a slut maker? I, well, uh, <laughs> you know. Men who have sex out of wedlock. Oh, yeah. And women who have sex out of wedlock are sluts. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I did that. You were a slut maker? I had a couple of times. But your mama told you not to do that. Yeah, she did. And you went out and became a slut maker anyway? Yeah. See? My dad told that me not to do that. That was bad advice your but mama my, gave you. But my father told me not to do that too, so right. I was just a disobedient child at the time. <laughs> but yeah. I grew up. But let's go back to this because of time. Um, do you believe that the God above is the God of man and the God below is the God of the woman? So the God below is Satan. Right. And the God above, of course, is our Heavenly Father. Right. Well, no. I believe God above is the Father of, of humanity. He's the creator of humanity. Do you believe he's the God of the woman? Satan or God? Do you believe that the God above is the God of the woman or Satan is the God of the woman? The God above. You don't believe that Satan is the God of the woman? No. Why not? Because he didn't create her. I'm sorry? He did not create the woman. But why do you believe that he is not the woman's God? Because he didn't create him. Then why do women listen to Satan? Uh, some women do, just like some men do. All women do. No, Jesse. Jesse. Please stop that. <laughs> not what? No, not I, all women are listening to Satan. Until they, are born, until they return to the Father, born again of God, they do listen to the so, devil. So I would say the same thing for all men. Do you, any, agree, anybody, with, do you agree with that? Me, until the woman returns to the Father, I agree. she does I, listen to Satan. I agree, and I, and I and say the same Satan thing. If Satan wasn't her God, would she listen to him? It's not gender specific. If Satan wasn't her God, would she listen to him? Well, yeah, yeah. All of us, when we were in the world and not saved, if Satan the wasn't God of this her world God, was all of our gods at one time. If Satan wasn't her God, would she listen to him? I guess not. I'm sorry? I guess not. And so do you agree then that Satan is the woman's God? He's everybody's God who is not saved in Christ. How about the woman? Everybody, male and female. There's only two genders. You, and and whether, whether a man or a woman, if they are not in Christ, the God of this world has blinded them with darkness and he is their God, male or female. Why do you believe that Satan is the man's God, the male God, man, man, if the, the man, God. if the man is in sin and, and not following Christ, he's he, the God of this world is his God, too. 
But why do you believe that Satan is the man's God? Because if the man is following darkness and Satan is the prince of darkness, well, then he's their God. That's why you believe Satan is the man's God? I believe Satan is every sinner's God. Do you have proof that Satan is the man's God? Yeah. Is there anywhere in the Bible where God says Satan is the man's God? Yeah. Where? Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and he told them that your father is Satan. Right. And those were men. That's in the Old Testament? No, that's in the New Testament. New Testament. I got proof that the woman is the man's God and not Satan. Ooh, the woman is the man's God. Go ahead. Give me that. <laughs> Give it to me, Jesse. Man, I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, she controlling them with, with her with her private? Long story short, remember when uh, God made Adam, mm -hmm. right? And Adam and his father were close. They were one. Mm -hmm. And they communicated without words, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, okay. And they were one, <clears throat> father and son. And then God, and I know why, but it was a long story, decided that Adam needed a wife. So he made the woman from the man, right? Mm -hmm. And then at one time, the woman listened to her husband who listened to his father, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Because God is the man's God, God in Christ, Christ and man, man or woman. So Adam listened to his father, the woman listened to her husband who listened to his father, right? Mm -hmm. And then one day uh, he sent her out shopping. He like, go to the store, the garden, mm -hmm. and get some candy yams, collard greens, some okra. <laughs> Sound like a Southern woman. <laughs> she was. <laughs> okay. They were in this, they were in South, south of the garden. South Eden, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so he went, she went shopping, right? And while she was out shopping, she saw Satan. And he was like, hey, Eve, how you? Fine, how you doing, sir? And he like, how's Adam? He's fine. And he was like, why do you listen to him? Well, that's my husband. Mm. I'm supposed to obey him. I listen to him. And he was like, you can be your own woman. Don't listen to that man. He listened to his father. Okay. And she was like, uh-uh. I'm not paying attention to that. My husband is my husband. Mm -hmm. So she went home and during dinner, she I ran into Satan today and he was questioning me as to why I was listening to you. Right. And Adam said, stay away from him. He's evil. Yeah. And she was like, all right. And so another two weeks because they ran out of groceries in two weeks. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, he w she went back shopping again, and this time they got white people food, salad. Fruit. Fr yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know how white water. people eat. <laughs> A lot of water. <laughs> no, no juice and Kool-Aid. Right. Man. Okay. And while she was out there, she ran to Satan again, and, hey, hey, how you doing? Fine. Are you still, how you and Adam doing? Fine. You still listening to him? He was like, she was like, yeah, I still listen to him. She like, he was like, no, don't do that. You could be your own woman. You could take your bra off. You could fight for civil, your own rights, women's rights, mm -hmm. the right to vote and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you could, and she like, he was like, don't listen to uh, your husband. He listened to his father. He, not even, he doesn't even have his own mind. Why would you listen to that? And she was like, you know, you're right. <clears throat> I'm not going to listen to him anymore. Wow. And the moment she believed Satan, he became her God. Is that true? Amazing. Is that true? I'm using your word. Just right. <laughs> Amazing. Is that true that that happened? She, yeah, she became his God. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Yes. Yes, what? Satan became her God at that time. Right. Right. And then she went home with the grocer, and this time she didn't make the meal. And so Adam called home from work because, and he was like, well, he didn't really work then because God provided everything, right? He wasn't, didn't have to work at the time. And so... He was like, where's dinner? She was like, get your own dinner. Oh, man. She, he was like, but you, you're supposed to make the meal. You're the woman. Right. I ain't making the dinner. I'm free. And then he's like, what happened? She like, I saw Satan today, and he told me that I can be free just as you. I can be equal to a man. Mm. And she believed that she no, no <clears throat> longer would listen to her husband. Mm. Is that true? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, she, she followed the, the serpent. Yes. Right. And then time went by because he was like arguing with her, trying to get her to do the right thing, but she wouldn't listen anymore mm -hmm. because Satan was her God. And, and so she told him, Satan told her to tell Adam, why you listen to your father? You need to be your own man. Why your daddy got to tell you everything? 
Why don't you think for yourself? And for a while, Adam said, no, I'm not listening to that. Mm -hmm. But then one day she convinced him to be his own man. He listened to the woman. And the moment he believed her, he could no longer believe his father. Mm. And now the woman is his, became his God. Is that true? Wow. I never heard it put that way. It, right. I, you never, I, I never heard it broke down like that, brother. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and that's because why she listened to Satan and, and she used the same trick on him and he began to follow her in that yeah. way. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And that's why men are subject to women today mm. because the woman is his God. Okay. His mama is his guy. Mm -hmm. Every woman he get involved. You notice that the woman you were married to was just like your mama? No, I didn't notice that. Yeah, she I wouldn't have had a sexual attraction to she her. She wouldn't <laughs> obey you. <laughs> right, right, right. She was just like, she put your, you through the same hell that your mama put your daddy through. Hmm. And because you become attracted to what you hate, and, and, and women recreate children in their image. Mm -hmm. by turning them away from their fathers today. Mm -hmm. And that's why you become emotional, you live in your imagination, you're looking for love, and you think you can get it through a woman when women don't have love, mm -hmm. and sex is not love. And that's why it doesn't work. Women don't have love? No. Wow. Because it comes from God through the man to the woman. And so that's why, so, uh, so that's why the woman, the woman is the man God, that's why he can't deal with her. Mm -hmm. But thank God for his son yeah. because he came and he turned everything around. Yes. And that's why he said that there will become a time when I'll turn the children to the father yeah. and the father to the children. children. You must be born again mm -hmm. of the father because every human being that's born through the woman is born of evil, of the devil. I'm going to have to come to one of your services here on, on Thursday night. That makes and, and sense. Listen, and listen to you. Yes. I, I got to check you out. That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love when you do that. That's why we must be born of the father. Mm -hmm. Men and women, because the mothers create them in her image, which is of the devil. Wow. Wow. I never heard it put that way. Uh, but it makes sense. It makes sense in some ways to me. What part in a way that it doesn't make sense? Um, um, because when you look at Ezekiel and different places, where every, every soul is responsible for their actions. As an adult, you are, not as kids, but you're right. Yeah. That's why as an adult, we're supposed to seek the kingdom of God for ourselves yeah. because we're responsible. So, we're, but we're not talking about children. You said men, uh, women. Men, men, women and, yeah. women are, are grown, right. men are grown. And, uh, and you say that they, they follow the woman. You say that that's their God. But if they're men and they're fully grown, they should make a decision not to follow the woman. But they can't make that decision because they don't know what's going on. Okay. They don't know they've been recreated in the image of the mother. Oh. And that's why in the home, the mother secretly turned all the children to her away from their father by playing victim or your father. Jesse, this. hold on one second. Let me, can I ask you a question? Yes. You're interviewing me, but I want to ask you. Are you saying this about every woman? Every, every woman? Every woman on earth. That's why wow. God said all who were born of you the woman. You talking about my mom? I'm out of here. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm best. That's why God said all who were born of the woman are born into sin, and they must be born again into the Father. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that another right. time. Yeah, let's go to do the because you're running for Congress. Well, yeah, I am running for I ran last year, Jesse. I'm running. Nice. And I just made my announcement uh, a couple of nights ago. Okay, well, we better move on. No, I, I'm enjoying this. We can get to that. Whatever you want to do. You're the interviewer. Let me ask this. Um, what's wrong with the blacks? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, think it's hypno I think it's hypnosis. I think, uh, I think it's, um, and I, I don't want to say this in a, in a way that, that to belittle people, it's, it's ignorance. You know, when, when I dropped that political ad that went viral last year with the KKK, a lot of black people didn't know that the, the, the Democrat right. Party was the ones who were responsible for the KKK. So they was calling me all kinds of coons and, you know, N words and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, read your history. But the problem is, is that on these social platforms, they're scrubbing history and, and rewriting it. Yeah, you they know? are. What yeah. a mess. It's, it's really dangerous what, yeah. we got, what we have here. I noticed that the blacks, no, 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 but most, that... They are not really innovative. They're not smart. They don't build things. Yeah. And even when the white people give them their stuff, mm -hmm. they tear it down. They destroy it rather than make it better. Right. Why is that? Um, it's all about respect and appreciation. 
But why but, don't but, they but, appreciate it? Let me say this. I, I say that uh, foreign blacks, people, bl people who are black and weren't born in American soil, they come over and take advantage of all the wonderful things that this country provides. Right. But because the Democrat Party and I guess our families have taught um, uh, black descendants that this is this is nothing. Even calling somebody an African American is disdain for your place here in America. Absolutely. The, you, I'm, I've never been to Africa. I, I've, out of all of my world travels, I've never been there. I don't know any family members that I'm connected to there. So it's a psychological job to, when I call you an African American. You don't know, but in your in your brain, that's doing a job on you psychologically. It is. It's displacing you it's from your you homeland. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. I think the party has done a wonderful job uh, at, at uh, making black people angry at their heritage here in America. So you don't appreciate it. I know what you mean by that. And that's mm -hmm. what the Democrats do. They keep the blacks on the plantation of the Democratic Party right. so that they can use them for destruction. Mm -hmm. If you notice, they don't ever use blacks for good. They always use them for destruction. Absolutely. Uh, and why can't the blacks say to themselves as an individual, this is wrong for me to steal and break right. in people's property and beat up white people. And why don't they say that as an adult, as an individual? Mm -hmm. Why don't they see that and not do it? I don't know. I think it's based on emotion and ignorance. Yeah. If, if you just if you tell a, a, a black kid in, in the hood, you tell them that a Republican is racist, that Donald Trump is racist, they're not going to do research. The emotion automatically takes over all logic. It does. And they just begin to just operate on emotions. It's, it's a terrible thing. Uh, but when you try to enlighten them, like I did with my, with my video and with my congressional run, um, they don't have time to listen to it. I saw that video where you, with the Klan's thing, it yeah. was powerful. Thank you. And uh, we're gonna tell people how to see it. Okay. It really was, it was amazing. Yeah, uh, I, I ended up getting poisoned behind that. Nice. Yeah, yeah, what you mean nice? And now you wanna kill me, Jesse? <laughs> you mean like, <laughs> Really, you like? I was poisoned. I was in the hospital for six days. Really? Yes. What do you? How did they poison you, brother? I think it was. Uh, I think it was something I drank. I thought you meant they call you names. No, no, no. I was literally poisoned. I was airlifted to to Banner Hospital. Um, well, actually, I drove myself at three o'clock in the morning to Tempe, uh, St. Luke's. Went there. I got there at three o'clock in the morning, and they didn't see me right away. I laid on the cold floor waiting for them to see all of the new border crosses, all of the wonderful people who crossed the border who got priority over me. Yeah, that's important. Uh, seven o'clock in the morning, they was lifting me off the floor and I was drenched in sweat. My kidneys were shutting down, head was hurting, and my pulse was almost gone, so. Wow. Yeah. And, and how do you know that they poisoned? I was poisoned. They told the you that told the me. Yeah, they, they put oh. police protection at my door. And how do you know it was because of your ad? It happened right after that. And here's the thing that was funny, is that I was being followed everywhere by the, I think was the FBI. For four oh. days, everywhere I went, and this was close to my primary, so I was campaigning maybe four, five, six, seven places in a day. So I was all over the place, and people asked me where did I get poisoned, and I had no idea. You know, I couldn't even tell oh. you, you know, where I was most of those times, because I was really campaigning, meeting people, and telling them my, why I'm running and all that kind of stuff. Long and, story short, how did, what does that feel like to be poisoned? What, what were you feeling inside? Pain, uh, vomiting, oh. uh, yeah, uh, just sick. Wow. Super headache, uh, yeah, just mostly vomiting, pain in my back, I couldn't stand up straight. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm my kidneys shut down. How long were you ill? Six days. Wow. And I was weak maybe, maybe about a month after that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you, well, I'm glad you made it through that. I thought you meant personal attacks and things oh, like no, that. Oh, it no, was, it was really literal. Funny that thing is, is amazing. Funny thing is, my opponents never even, nobody ever even checked on me. My, lots of my volunteers was outside of the hospital, but my Republican opponents, they never even, you know, I was fighting for my life. Have you, I believe that we now have a one-party system you and think it's a unipart, unipart? I think that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are the same now. Yeah. And uh, because I noticed with the Republican, they get nothing done. Yeah. And when Donald Trump was in office, they worked against him. Yes, they did. And not with him. Yeah. So why should we vote for the Republican Party knowing that we're a one-party system now? We don't have a two-party. I love our policies. Our platform is... is 
immaculate, it's wonderful, it's great for the American people, it's great for stimulus, it's great for the economy, it's great for families. You know, it, 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 you know, having the heart of the fathers come back to the families. But they're not doing it. If we could get some people in office who would stick to the policies of, yeah. the, of the republic, then we would have a great America. Right. But when Trump was in office, he, we had the House and the Senate. If he didn't have those turncoats and those corrupt leaders in the Republican Party, America would have been so much established. Absolutely. We would have made up stuff in, 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 in within 20, 20 years. So I got so much I want to ask you, but let me ask you this. Knowing that I know that black people don't do anything. They don't make anything better. Even the black, black Republican, you know that guy, Tim Scott? Tim Scott. He ain't no good. He haven't done anything. He's a writer. Well, to me, I, I look at his record and I haven't seen anything. I so haven't seen why anything. should I vote for a black person, whether they're Republican or not, mm -hmm. knowing that they ain't gonna do nothing? I don't want anybody to vote for me based on my skin color. I want people to listen to the content of my character. I want you to listen to my policies. If my policies are going to enhance your life and make you better, if you, f if you fit into the strategy of my policies, you wear uh, uh, traditional families, uh, secured borders, protecting children and protecting our freedom, well, then if that's not for you, then don't, don't vote for me just because I'm a black person. Vote for me based on the policies. But once you get in there, are you, how are you going to be able to stand up to the women, Republican women? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, there you go. Oh, I love this guy. I love Jesse a lot. <laughs> and, and, and the party that's going to be against you, and especially with the women, because a lot of men, most men can't stand up to women, right? How will you be able to do that when you think that a woman can lead? Well, I, I'm, I'm not led by a woman's skirt or her power to lead. I'm led by the Constitution. What's great for the American people? And if that bill is not for the American people, if they want me to send money to Ukraine and to Israel and all these different places, no. I believe in America first. Our people are struggling here. We have people on the street. We they have don't even take who, their home. They don't. It's, just, it's the most upsetting thing I've ever yeah. seen. So no woman or man or anybody else is going to get me to vote against the American people. Do you believe that racism exists? Yes, I do. You do? Mm -hmm. And where is your proof that racism exists? The Democrats. What do you mean? That's the proof. That they're racist? Yeah. Are you saying that's the proof? That that's the proof. So are you saying that even the, the black Democrats are racist too? Yes, they are. You are? They yeah. are? They are. Um, They're gatekeepers. They're, they know what's going on. They know the Democrats have yeah. a diabolical plan to destroy black babies with abortion. And it has worked. The black population is only 12% in America. With all the booty shaking and dropping like it's hot and all the stuff we come up with, we, you think we would be 40, 50 percent of the population in America. Right. But Margaret Sanger came up with an a, a, a immaculate plan of genocide for the black community, yeah. and it has worked. Yeah. And it was the Democrats who's done that. And, and every, time, every time that they're in power, they're the ones who use the system of the government as a weapon against the black people. And she was a favorite of the, uh, one of the favorite speakers for the, the Ku Klux Klan at the time. They Absolutely. loved her. Yes, they did. And it, I think Margaret Sanger gave Hillary Clinton a Kuhn, no, not a Kuhn award, but <laughs> <laughs> she gave her, uh, yeah, gave her uh, an award. Yeah. She also gave Martin Luther King one, too. She did? Yeah. I thought he was a Republican. He was supposed, he was, yeah. but... His father was he, a Republican, he, too. Right, but he seemed to... I think he turned. He seemed to have yeah, turned. Yeah, he turned, yeah. Because the worst thing that, other than abortion itself, the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks was the civil rights movement. In, in what way? <laughs> no, don't, don't mean talk to me, I, I wanna know. Because prior to the civil rights movement, and I grew up in Alabama on a plantation. Yeah, you know. And, and you grew up Jim on a Cook, plantation. Yeah, picked cotton and did all they had a white master. Wow. Every time my master said he was sick, I said, yes, a master, we sick we, too. You are funny, you. <laughs> 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 now I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But during that time when this so-called Jim Crow thing existed, black people were independent. They were married, they bought a home, they had land, they educated the children. My aunt and her husband had like 15, 16, 17 children, but they owned their own land. They educated all their kids. They went to college, and if they wanted to go, but they taught us how to work and everything by land. And it wasn't until the civil rights movement happened mm -hmm. that Martin Luther King and others convinced the blacks to turn their lives over to them. Yeah. And then they sold them to the Democratic Party. Yes, to they certainly did. I, I certainly agree with and that. And blacks have not returned since then. Well, 
it wasn't until I got older that I, that I grew uh, uh, an understanding of what M Malcolm X was doing. Yeah. So in my Me video, in, in my video, make rifles great again. Right. I'm dressed like Malcolm X. Nice. You know, with the with the gray suit on, with the glasses. It was it was a nod to my brother Malcolm. And what's your video called? Make rifles great again. Nice. Yeah. Um, I dropped it like it was hot. I put my thumb in the devil's eye. Good man. I know yeah. I like your videos. Thank Blue you. Was amazing stuff you're coming up with. Thank you, brother. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, is there any proof in the Bible that racism exists? Uh, yeah, I, I would say so, but, it, but it's 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 generalized and it's broad. But but sin and 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 as you the name of your show, the fallen state, the fallen state of man is proof right. that racism exists, that hatred exists, that murder exists, that dislike exists, that uh, corruption exists. That's the proof that I have. But but it's, it's uh, if we want to do it based on history, well then they come up with place things like the KKK or like the Clintons when they were in charge of uh, running the governor of the state of Arkansas. They put black people in prison and they drew their blood. They sold their blood. Uh, you know, the Clinton blood dynasty. Nice. What do you, what you mean that's nice? I mean, you're just using them brothers it's up. It's in the blood. It's no, in the blood. Mm -hmm. um, God said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, yeah. but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high in places. High places yeah. And that our battle is a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. It's not physical at all. Mm -hmm. Why don't you see that it's not physical, but it's spiritual? spiritual in that those who have anger are evil because Satan is their father and they are, all angry people want to control others in order to feel good about themselves. I'm angry. All, do you want to control people? No, I don't. Oh, okay. But all angry people want to control others so that they can feel good about themselves, their own egos, right? And so that's why the blacks and the others, they use other people they tell black people it's racism. Mm -hmm. And the black people believe that, so they act out. As right. soon as the blacks are acting out, then they come back and say, we need money right. to fix this and fix that. The blacks need money, they need affirmative action, they need this. And then they get the money, but the money never make it down to the people, end up in the pockets of the... I know but, how it goes. But if the blacks understood that it's not racism, and there's, there's no such thing as racism, sexism, homophobism, Allah U Abba is um, mm -hmm. uh, anti Semitism or white supremacy, it's a spiritual battle. Then they could not be controlled by that word racism because it doesn't exist, it's just a word. Mm -hmm. So, if they understood it was spiritual. Yeah, it, it's spiritual. Uh, but, I, I, but I think the scripture that you used spoke about the origin of the battle. Right. The, that's where it begins. It With begins the in the spirit realm. Yeah. But it's, it's, and everyone who has anger is evil. They're of their father and the devil. And they're going to always use people to make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. It's never about a person. The uh, angry person, whether it's your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your wife, your kids, if they have anger, it's never about the person. It's always about themselves and never about anyone else. Really? Because that's what the ego is all about, the okay. nature of the devil. Mm -hmm. That's why we must be born again of love, and angry people have no love. They have emotions, but emotions are not love. You can feel one way one time, and then you feel another way down, yeah, and then you feel the other down. It's just emotional. And now you want to jump off the bridge because you, that emotion is, is not of God, it's of the devil. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Uh, I, 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 it's, it's some way, not, not 100%, but I do. And why not 100%? Um, because I think... Anger is a, is a, I don't think it's always evil because mm -hmm. some anger isn't based on evil actions. Some anger is just like a, a parental anger. You know, if I'm, if I'm a parent and my son uh, disappoints me and I feel upset about something, you know. But if you're not angry, it's impossible to be made to be disappointed or upset about anything. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Because you of love. Well, I mean... I get angry sometimes. I'm, I'm just, oh, man. I'm just being honest with you. Right, but you need to be born again of the Father, so again. you would not be of anger. I'm born again. I am. How can you be born again and still get angry? God gets angry. No, He doesn't. Yes, He does. Not like human beings in their fallen state. Well, because a lot of human beings think that the anger they have because they read in the Bible, in the Word, 
that God was angry or whatever they read. Yeah, Jesus yeah. was angry, whatever they say. Yeah. They're thinking that he mean it mean they were angry like they are mm -hmm. because they can't separate this evil anger from discernment. Mm -hmm. They think Jesus had Satan's identity and he did not. Mm. They think Jesus had Satan's identity. If they think that he was angry like they are, emotional. God is a dispassionate God. He's not a passionate God. Mm. There is no emotional so you, love. You said there's no emotion, so God doesn't have feelings? No. He has pure light, pure love, and it's not based on anything that he think or feel. That's why when we're born again of God, we bring every thought into captivity, and life is a we, we live a life without thinking, mm -hmm. except for practical thought. But we live a life of knowing, but not thinking. That's why he said, bring every thought into captivity. Yeah. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. They're of your father, the devil. Okay. That makes sense? Did he say bring ways. every thought into captivity? Yeah, he's talked about, yeah. And so why uh, would a Christian still be of thinking if he said, don't believe any thought? My children would know me by my voice. My voice is a voiceless voice. Mm -hmm. And Satan voice talks in your head. Yeah. Is that true? Yes, I do. That's so true. then why would you listen to that? Yeah, I, I hear you. What do you think? I, I hear you. I mean, I mean we, would have, we would have to do a lot of, lot of sit down talking over that. I don't want to take up all the time. Okay, but that makes sense a little bit? Yes. Amazing, huh? Yes, amazing. One quick question then, I got to move on. Um, is Jesus God or the Son of God? Both. I'm sorry? Both. What do you mean by that? Jesus is God. And, and how is that? Are you saying he's the son and the father? Yes. How can he be the son and the father? Well, because he had to come down in the form of man. God had to come down in the form of a theophany, in the form of man, in order to redeem him, but yet still remain his divinity. His divinity. But, so he is God. And so remember when he said, don't be worshiping me. It's not in me. It's not me, but my father in me. Right. Right. Did he say it wasn't me, but my father in me, right? Mm -hmm. And if he was the father, why would he say it's not me, but the father in me? Well, he was trying, at the time he was expressing his humanity and his submission to the father. See, he, he was, what, what John said, though he was equal with God, made himself of no reputation, but he humbled himself. But why would he say my father, why didn't he just say, you know what, right on is me. I'm doing the work. There was another place where he said, I and my father are one. Right. There was another place in John chapter 14 where he said, if you've seen me, you have seen the father. Absolutely. So he's speaking of another person, right? Well, let me say this. That human beings are hybrids. So many angels are hybrids. Hybrids? Hybrids. hybrids. Oh, like those cars? Yeah. It's, we're triune. We're a triune being. Some angels are triune, like the, like the cherub. The, but because the, of time, why would he say, my father and I are one? Why would he say, I have to go away now and seek my father's will? Right. We go and pray. Right, right. Mm -hmm. If he were God, why he had to go and seek his father's will? Because he was teaching us submission to the father. How would he teach us that? That would have been confusion. Well, that's what I wanted to get to over there. Because God is the only, only being who ever existed who is omnipresent and yet remain one. That's Do you what, that's believe that the father is inside of you? Yes. You believe the Father inside of you? Yes. That God is inside of you? Yes, I do. Are you a son of God? Yes. And so are you God? No. Why not? If, if Jesus was God and he said he was the son and the Father was in him. I was never there from the beginning. The Bible declares in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word in that, in that text is personified. The W is capital. But if Jesus. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the Bible is telling us that Jesus was in the beginning and he created all things and he was God being with God. But, but if Jesus was God, but you say that, so Jesus said the father's in me. Yeah, he said right? that. Mm -hmm. And you just told me the father's in you, mm -hmm. Right. So why aren't you God if the Father's in you? Well, because I, I wasn't in the beginning. I well, didn't help I, God create nothing. But the, but the Word, who is what Jesus was, he said, I was with God in the beginning. Where is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is in heaven. But the kingdom of God is everywhere. 
And because the kingdom of God is not a locality, it's a power. So the kingdom of heaven is not the kingdom of God. It is, but it's a location. And where is it? It's wherever God is. And where is that? Away from this earth and everywhere. God is omnipresent. And what does that mean? He can be everywhere at the same time. He could pass himself while he's passing himself and pass himself at the same time. So he, he's uh, omnipresent. He can be everywhere he wants to be. Do you believe that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you? No. You don't? I believe that the kingdom of God is in me. But the kingdom but of heaven the kingdom is... Of heaven, I mean the kingdom of God. Yeah. Do you believe the kingdom of God is inside of you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Yes. You do believe that? I do. Why? Because Jesus was casting out devils in one time in his ministry. And he said, if I with the finger of God cast out devils, then I then know that the kingdom of God has come among you. I've cast out devils. I've, I've prayed and people were healed. So that was a manifestation of the kingdom that was operating in me. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so you do believe the kingdom of God inside of you. I do. Right. When Christ said, greater work that I've done, you would do them too. Yes. So don't be praising me because you can do greater work. Do you believe that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. And if he was God, why would he say the greater work we're going to do than what God is doing? Right. Well, um, you're right. I, I think that he meant the greater work because he, he meant. was. Yeah. He made a mistake. No, what he said was, was that I'm just one person. But when I give you the spirit and put the kingdom and the presence of God in you, then you're going to do these things and it's going to be on a bigger scale. And what he said, we're going to do greater work than God. No, but God, he said greater work than where what was I'm Jesus, doing. Where was Jesus at? Was he was did he when he appeared, did he appear in the Middle East or around the world? Did he, he do the miracles? Every, so so this is what he was saying from, from what I see. He was in the Middle East, and that was one location. And he did those miracles, raising the sick, uh, raising the dead and all that stuff, multiplying the fish. That was just in that location. But now since he's got people like you and me and we're scattered abroad all over the world, those miracles are taking place on a larger scale in different places. What is a man? A male. Uh, I'm sorry? A male. A man is a male? A man, mm -hmm. and, and what is love? Love is a, is a feeling, is an expression. Love is a feeling. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put you on the hot seat. Okay, let's and, go. And I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay, one, one word answers? Quickly as possible. Just go. Let me ask first before I do this. Uh, do you support the Great White Hope? Who is it? What's that? The Great White Hope. A boxer? No, man. Who? Donald Trump. Yes, I do. Right on. Yes. You got my vote. Donald Trump is the man. If you could put the great white hope. Yes, I do. One last thing about that. Will you be able to deal with the Wicked Witch of the West if you become a congressperson? Who's the Wicked Witch of the West? You ever heard about the Wicked Witch? Bring her on. Maxine Waters. Oh. Yeah. J James Brown lookalike? I got That's no problem. <laughs> That's no problem. <laughs> okay. I got to put you on the hot seat. I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Should men play in women's sports? No. Should women play in men's sports? No. Are you a nationalist? Yes. Is Alba Borders under invasion right now? Absolutely. Uh, have you ever told anyone how the cow ate the cabbage? No. Does the bear shit in the woods? Yes. <laughs> Does the chicken have lips? No. Should a parent allow their children to play football? Yes. Do you believe in climate change? No. Is the earth flat or round? Round. Is it okay for a black man to love the Confederate flag? Yes. Should a man ever tell a woman she's fat? No. Uh, do we need more white babies? Yes. Is the earth, oh, I asked about the earth. <laughs> uh, would you ever run for president? Yes. Has anyone ever told you how Hoppo told he told Harpo to beat me. Yeah, he told yeah. Harpo to beat me. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone ever told Harpo to beat you? No. Did you? Oh, I asked you that one. Did you have fun? I had fun. I enjoyed it. Yes. Amazing. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you for having me, brother. That was amazing. So I want you to tell people how to get your videos, your YouTube, whatever, how yes. they can support you in your run. 
support me, go to my website, Jerome for Congress, J-E-R-O-N-E, uh, and um, support what I'm doing. We are a grassroots campaign. We're not getting any help from the national organization. I need you, people who want uh, red-blooded America first patriots who are in office representing you, the people. I am of you, I am for you, and I'm going to represent you. Go to my campaign, go to my website, Jerome Davison. Donate 5 or $10 to the campaign. Much appreciated. Amazing. Thanks again, man. And thank you all for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Check out our merch, amazing merch. And don't forget, you can support the Father State by going to thefatherstate.tv slash donate. And also, we are on locals.com. Click on the link in the video description to support our work. And I do appreciate it. And if you have ideas for guests on the Father State, let us know about it. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Oh, amazing. Mr. Jesse. Amazing.